Greetings! As you remember, in the previous part of the guide, we successfully obtained and upgraded two top-tier katanas, crafted the best potion for them, and opened up several farming spots. But if you thought that would be enough for me, you're dead wrong. By the end of this video, you will be OP to the point where you can easily tank any boss damage just by pressing one button. Upgrade your weapon to the max level, reach 100 plus level with your character, and even your summon spirit will be able to destroy bosses solo without your help. And all of that in just a couple of hours of gameplay. In the meantime, I hope you've stocked up on something tasty and hit the like button, because we are starting. Hey! I believe while you're waiting for a second part, you are able to enjoy the open world and complete some quests. After all, Miyazaki and Martin didn't spend all that time writing those obscure dialogues for nothing. I also believe Godric was able to complete the last quest of his life, because there won't be any more opportunities. For defeating such a great opponent, we receive an equally great rune, which I recommend activating by crossing this bridge. It gives us 50 levels, 5 for each attribute. At the beginning of the game, it doesn't get any better than this. Mathematically speaking, the higher your level, the less significant the attribute increase from this rune will be. Therefore, we will replace this rune in the future. And I suggest hiring to replace our farm location, with the help of Mr. Ware, who moved here after we defeated Godric. While we are on our way, it's important to stop by and help Lady, who lost her necklace. Not only out of compassion for her illness, scoliosis is a problem, I know it by myself, <coughs> uh, but first of all, we help her to make the person who stole her necklace to start selling the boss we need. Talk to him about the necklace, buy it back and return it to Raya to advance her quest. In addition, after buying the necklace, uh, the thief will start selling boiled prawn, that increase our physical resistance by 15% for 60 seconds. Seconds. We should buy some for the future and exhaust his dialogues. To get this gesture, we'll need it later. Finally, we've arrived to our main source of runes for the rest of the game. Speak to him and choose the top option. And after receiving bloody fingers, the next thing we can do to progress his quest is to invade other players three times as a hostile phantom. Fighting someone is optional. We can exit immediately after invading, but for our level, we're probably too OP to find the suitable opponent quickly. So for those who don't want to wait for an opponent or simply don't like playing online, please follow me to the third large location of the game. To do this, we'll visit Fort Haight here. To loot the second part of the medallion, the first part of which we already found... Uh, you know. From the grace we activated in the previous video, we head here and, after showing our pass, we ascend to the golden fields near the capital. Follow the main road and, of course, activate the site of grace. Loot golden seeds as well. And pick up map fragment. On the map the place we need looks like this. Go to this ruined bridge, additionally stocking up on some stone sword keys from the local merchant for the future. Use the teleporter to get to the other half of the bridge, and we're in the part of location we need. Heading to the point, we invade Magnus and annihilate him from existence. Don't worry, our attempts are limited only by number of bloody fingers we have. By the way, if you win, you get a somber smithing stone 6. I think your katana will be happy to receive an upgrade. <coughs> Return to Wari with victory and choose the upper option again. Now he's asking us to stain some shoal with blood. Since our character is unlikely to have any problems with blood pressure, after all, constant cardio from running to quests do its job, so we head to the site of grace near the tree where we obtained the magic damage tier in the previous video, and then right to the church. On the way, one lunatic attacks us, but we can ignore him. The main thing is to reach the church and interact with the dead maiden. Okay, now go back to worry and congratulations to you getting a VIP pass to the closed event. Only Chanus Ancestus to its main host, Mug, Lord of Blood. Use it. As soon as we arrive, take map shards and run to the this side of grace. Welcome to farm fields, mother. From here, we have a great opportunity to farm runes in three different ways. The first method, and the one method we will use, is simply buffing with scarab and golden foot and shooting this chicken. The second method is a complex bug with infinite falling during which the location is unloaded from memory, resulting in nearby enemies dying and giving you souls. The third option is to kill nearby albinors with some area damage skill. We don't have one yet. 
So, spend some time on this chicken. And since we have access to a huge amount of free levels, we naturally level up our HP, and I highly recommend investing some runes into faith, up to 25, to be able to use flame grant me strength. This buff enhances our physical and fire damage for 30 seconds, and most importantly, on 25 faith we can use the best buff in the game. Golden Vow. Located on this path from the place in Altus Plateau where we assassinated some guy by war request. It enhances all our damage by 15% and reduces incoming damage by 10. Buff lasts 80 seconds. Now it would be ideal to obtain the best sacred seal, through which we will cast all these buffs. It's located in the same dungeon where we picked up the best talisman, but through a different path. While I'm running towards it, it is worth mentioning why the Dragon Combination Seal is the best for applying buffs. Because buffs are not enhanced by the strength or level of the seal, unlike any attack magic, which we will not use. Therefore, the main thing the seal should have is low weight, so that we can wear heavier armor. This one weighs exactly zero, so take it from this knight, either by luring him into a chariot, or just killing him with your blades. And that's it. Now we have the complete set for boss annihilation. We use the potion, apply the woe, and let the flame give us strength. Or instead of flame, you can use prawn to further increase our resistances. Although, why eat prawn when our seafood merchant has moved to a new location and now sells crabs that increase resistances not by 15, but by 20%. To get to him, we'll need to drive straight to the capital, from other side of the bridge. And for convenience, I suggest stopping by for a fragment, to fully open up Landal area. And along this simple path, we easily find the Black Guard on this lake. By the way, I think it's time to improve our weapons a bit. To do this, we return to the Dector's left and talk to Raya, whose knuckles were returned in advance. She will offer to hold hands, uh, we agree and teleport to the Volcano Manor. Activate the Grace, talk to the local Dark Brotherhood leader, Lady Tanith, and receive a key from her. Then we immediately run along this path. Here I think you can thank yourself for keeping a dagger with a quick step or bloodhound step in your inventory, as I recommended in previous video, because it will be very useful for advancing through the lava. I think it would be nice to open the shortcut, so that we don't have to run this path again in case if we die. Here we find a somber smithing stone of the 5th level, and after descending from here we find another one of the 6th level. So now we have 2 katanas plus 6. Incredible damage under all buffs, and I would like to get the best armor in the game. Go to this room, pick up the letter, find the red mark on the map, kill the target, return to the manor, talk with Tenet, receive magma shot as a reward, then talk to Patches, who has moved here. By the way, I recommend buying Margit's shackles from him, and adding them to your quick slot. Shackles destroy illusory walls, raise and lower the statues in nearby OE, and do a couple of other things. Learn about it on Google, if you're interested. Now about the armor. Patches gives us a contract to kill the local Havel. In order to meet our assassination target, we need to get to the entrance of that mine. From the Dector's left we go to this descent, take the golden seed, see that side of grace, and then we run a marathon. Finally, Makar is defeated. Sit on grace, and now we see a red sign. Go and deal with that fat guy. And that's it. Now we don't really need all these manor quests. All the best loot they got, now we have. Without going too much from Makar <laughs> boss room, um, just run to the elevator and follow this path to the dungeon. In this hole in the rock, we need the Raptor Black Feathers. It's a chest armor which boosts our jump attack damage by 10%. Upon entering it, we immediately find an illusory wall. Run further, see another illusory wall, and there it is, feathers we need. By the way, the effect of this armor combines with the Cloud Talisman, which can be found in Godric Castle. Remember, I said Volcano Manor has offered us everything it could. Well, 
Almost everything. I think it's time to pay a visit to Satan for the main sword of our build. To get to the lord of this castle, all you need to do is kill this burger recycling machine. But there is one problem. It would take some effort. But likely you have me to guide you. All we need to do is make a couple of sleep pods, which look like this in the interface. If you don't have any, just pick up the recipe for them at the cemetery here. To begin with, we need a container. Most likely you already have some of them. But just in case, you can buy three cracked pods from Kale and find another three in Charborg. Now the filling of pots. It's made from Trina's lilies, which are easily found near this grace under the Albiner village. As you can see, there's enough of them. You can find the rest lilies locations on a wiki, or if you want an infinite supply, you can go to the swamp, to this site, by following this road, you'll meet enough clean rod knights from whom this very lilies drops by 2% chance. So if you need this farming spot, don't forget about silver fall foods. By the way, I has to warn you that Millicent's phantom will invade you on your first visit. I don't think it would be hard to banish her. Well, maybe it will, but only because in the future she will become our third waifu. If for some reason, which I don't even want to ask about, uh, you don't have mushrooms, you can collect them at the same spot where you farm full foods. When you farm them. Or you can go to this site of grace, where located a year's supply of mushrooms, just follow this road. And with this stock of pots, we enter the boss room, throw the pot, and as soon as he falls asleep, do jump attack, execute a full combo of 4 hits, and after this strike him once to cause bleeding. Repeat it until he dies. Ah! Ah! After a fight, take the lift for a small run. And there it is, the portal to our overpowered sword. Activate the grace, enter the boss arena, take the spear and log out to the main menu. We're not going to fight this with an unupgraded spear. At the very least, I would upgrade it to plus 4, cause the stones can be bought unlimitedly from the twins, after finding the two must-have bell bearings in this and that cave. No one here offers resistance, just run to the boss and annihilate it. Hit the bug in the head, and the crystallians either with jump attack or ash of war of moon whale. Buy two of each stone tier from the husk mates to make sure we have enough for both the spear and the later sword. To be sure you easily kill the boss, put tiers for strength and dexterity in the potion, wear raptor's feathers, a cloud talisman, and a turtle shell shield on your back. And don't forget to allocate some flasks to mana to spam spears ash of war. And with the upgraded serpent hunter, the lord of mana, we'll have a really bad time. Starting the fight with a jump attack, then immediately use Ash of War twice and repeat this combo until it dies. And then do the same for the second time. Congratulations, you received Remembrance of Rikard. Perhaps while exploring the world you wondered why these giant turtles were needed to duplicate these memories, that's why. So go to the old lady with two fingers, get a third slot for talismans from her and craft the Bluffamous Blade. The main feature of the sword is that it heals you for 10% with each hit of its Ash of War on enemy. To spawn this attack, you'll need enough mana, so leave some flasks for that. Immediately sharpen the sword to plus 4. In case if you don't have some 5 tier somber smithing stones, simply go down the path of the well known broken bridge and the stone will drop from the scarab. If you follow the guide correctly, you already have the 6 somber stone. And we can collect 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th without fighting anyone, cause we already have all the necessary locations open. You can find the 7th by running in the opposite direction from the portal to Rikard, and, of course, donate two stone sword keys to the local imp. In that direction there is a shortcut to the main hall of the manor with an excellent ash of war. And in the opposite direction, the stone we need. The 8th stone drops from a scarab near Radagon Sarsiel castle. Well, and the last two stones are in our farm location. Let's run a little, and in this cave we easily loot one. 
by the way, near the second cave growing uh, 8 ghost glow worth. So take it too. The last piece for the plus 10 upgrade is in front of the entrance to the boss arena. Enter the cave, take the ghost glowers for later. Out of the cave and pick up the necessary stone from the chest, ignoring the locals. Well, congratulations to us on the new toy. In addition to heal, it also has a good damage. Now let's tidy up our talismans. I suggest using Ertree's favor, the Dragon Crest, and as you understand, in our tanky build, the Ratagon Sword Seal doesn't look so good. So we have a couple of options. The Ritual Sword Talisman stands out from the mini boss here, increasing our damage by 10% while we are at full HP. Thanks to our sword and armor, we always have full HP. If you want even more survivability, there is a max HP boost talisman lying along this path in the Volcano Manor. But I think it's even more important right now to get the Lens Between Equivalent of Hell's Ring. To get the Great Charles Arsenal, we descend into Siofra River and make a little run to this grace. You'll have to come here for this map fragment anyway. Then go to this portal and run this way, ignoring the Smurfs, until we find a grace. From here, reach the elevator, activate it with two stone sword keys, and it takes us to a secret location. After running through the canyon, talk to Chen Char, then fight his trial phantoms. The easiest way to choose him is to climb up into the stone. You can of course attack from here, but sometimes they can climb up too and create problems. So I would recommend going to this point and using the spread out gesture we found earlier. Waiting for them to get tired of running into the wall, and as you can see, if you take the right position, none of them can hit you. So, having won a crushing victory over all these three champions, Jar gives us the talisman that increases our maximum equip load. Now it's not such a big problem for us to wear the full set of the best armor in the game. In the future, when our level of endurance allows it, we can replace this talisman. Well, with this gear, we can easily go through the entire game and watch the credits without any problems. But I would insist and put our stats in order for this build. Ideally, everything should look like this. Of course, you can leave those useless points in intelligence, strength and agility to be able to switch to katanas. If, I don't know, you get bored of face tanking bosses. But personally, I prefer to respect the characteristics. For that, we need to go to the Academy of Raya Lucaria. We head to this point, pick up the key guard guarded by the dragon, and teleport to the familiar craze near the bridge. This time the bridge in Liurnia. We pass through the magical gates, activate the site, and walk through the academy. Be sure to pick up the glintstone wet blade to be able to grant cold affinity on weapons. This is the second strongest affinity after the blood one. Back to the academy. Run through the balls. <laughs> yeah, balls. Um, delete carrion knight from the game. And as you can see, even the local main boss cannot do nothing to us. After beating this milf for a small donation of one larval tier, she can redistribute our stats. For level 100, we set everything like this. For level 150, like this. And for 200s, to be honest, I don't know how much you farmed this chicken, so I showed the leveling with some margin. And now, what about potion buff? I recommend you to pick up these four tiers from three mini bosses. Flame damage boost tier drops from this copy of Stray Demon, resist boost and stance damage tier drops from this one, and from this ugly bastard drops a tier that increases our maximum HP. Pick the mix that works best for you. Must balance this upline tier plus flame tier. Uh, if you want to kill bosses faster, replace upline with store barb. And if you want some more survivability, replace flame tier with crimson pill. Well, now we're definitely invincible. All bosses in the game can be easily spammed with our wave of fire. And for those who have fire resistance, we can use Gargoyle's Black Blade or Inseparable Sword. Black Blade drops from the Gargoyle in front of Bastille Sanctum. I recommend to use this sword. 
because it's easy to get and its ability almost an exact copy of a chauffeur from Blasphemous Sword. Only the damage type is holy instead of fire, and it doesn't restore health. Inseparable Sword is obtained at the end of the Fia and D quest, which you will complete anyway if you plan to kill all the bosses in the game. It's also an excellent sword. I warn you, everything that is going to happen next in the video can no longer be called a soft word like overpowering, rather it's now a mockery of the game. As you can see from what's happening on the screen, all remaining hints of difficulty in Elden Ring have long been lost. And I think it's time to make the game play itself. To do this, it's time to force Rodan to stop holding back the stars. And by going to this address, we personally convey this request to him. With the way celestial bodies have fallen to the earth, the chasm leading to the underground city of Nokron has been opened for us. The first thing that I think everyone needs is Black Wet Blade, which allows you to grunt weapons blood affinity, which is very useful for making builds with the highest DPS, for example. Uh, okay, maybe I'll tell you more about this later. To obtain it, first we need to defeat our future property. I advise you to remove your weapon before entering to the arena, so that your copy can do anything to you. By the way, after defeating it, you'll get a mask, which increases the chance of item drop. It's very useful for farming some fall fits, for example. Unfortunately, it reduces your damage by 5%. Okay, we exit the boss arena and turn left. And it's time to... a little bit of parkour in Nokron. Finally, Black Wet Blade is in our hands, and I think it's time to get down to dirty business, obtaining the most powerful spirit summon in the game. Mimic Tear can be found along this path from the Wet Blade, you just need one stone sword key. In general, this summon is already the best in the game, but we need more. To level up this tier, we need Ghost Glow Wards. You've already looted some of them along the way. The bell bearing for purchasing the first three of them is located at the very beginning of Nokron. Um, the fourth one, a few steps away from it. The fifth one grows on this sunken building. And the sixth and seventh are in Gelmir Hero's Grave, which can be reached from this side of Grace. I'll just say, use all your runes before entering this place. All we need to do is run into this gap in the wall. Immediately pick up the 7th glove ward, and after running a few steps, pick up the 6th one. If you do what I said, and don't have any runes, come back with Memory of Grace. And if you do, well... I'll be waiting for you in 10 minutes later, when you run back. The 8, 9 and 10th glow ward are located at our farm base location. And we already looted them. Now we activate the ability to upgrade spirits by talking to the blacksmith and Rodrika. And, mm, as you can see, the game has become a little easier now. Even more than it was. I think it's time to take a walk around our future domains, explore the picturesque streets, jump on a dragon and take the last talisman pouch from the ghost of the former consort of the local goddess, about a divine family. Her favorite son is blocking the way to her. His shackles we bought from patches in advance, honestly I don't really need them. Just like bitches and paper at our current level of power, such things begin to seem so trivial. Without any need to fight, we pass to the entrance to the boss mother's chamber. Well, it's time to burn a couple of branches. And to help with our duty, Melina gives us a pass to mountaintops of giants. I don't recommend going up there yet, but it won't hurt to go activate Morgoth's rune in the nearby tower. Also, I recommend complete Euro's quest, that's the guy who helped us with the bloody finger in the previous video. It's not entirely unnecessary, but you will get a pretty useful tier for one late game boss. And if you go to the mountain tops of giants right now, the quest will fail. Let's go to the Patches cave where Euro helped us and meet him in this secluded place. Then we head to the main academy gate and activate the summoning sign to help him as he helped us. He doesn't know that we are now one of the bloody fingers, so we talk to him after the assistance and next we find him in Altus Plateau's second charge of Marika, where he will be lying stabbed to death by his beloved, whom we also kill. In the end, we get a useful tear from her, and not so useful twin blade. From Yura's body we acquire the longest katana in the game, which is also not bad. 
Well, guys, in the next episode we have a long journey to the northeast, and I hope you will prepare for it by leveling up your Flask of Sacred Tears, opening the map, collecting its fragments, and all of that. Um, I remind you about the subscribe and like buttons, and have a good day!